chapter 10, there is a lot of information in chapter 10 pertaining to motors and motors components. I'm going to highlight the stuff that you actually need to remember. I'm going to write it in the board. If I write something in the board, that means you need to know that. Yes. Other stuff, you can just have an idea of what's going on. Again, I don't want to overwhelm you with the amount of information, so let's just focus on what's important. I'll write it down. So, single phase hermetic motors. Those are the ones used for the AC. They usually have an external starting component. Guys, so most hermetic compressors require starting components. Why? Because we need a lot of torque. Why? Because we are turning a compressor, the compressor has a lot of pressure. So you cannot here use a shaded foam motor, because we said shaded foam motor has really low starting torque. So if you're going to resist the friction of a compressor, you need some kind of starting power. So usually it has starting apparatus. It could be a capacitor, it could be a relay, it could be a felt state relay. I will see the differences here. They're enclosed in a sealed case, and you want the starting component to be outside, again, to avoid having any kind of spark because the refrigerant is flammable. Sometimes we use a starting relay, which will drop an internal winding inside once the uh, motor has started. These are the starting relay. Either we have a, a current relay, potential relay, or solid state. So we have three means to start up the motor that is in a hermetic enclosure. Bearings. What do we mean bearings? We, if we did the motor uh, lap, probably you see the bearing permit smooth rotation. Uh, and also they carry the weight of the motor, especially if the motor is to be placed horizontally. Uh, there are two types of uh, bearings we have in motors. <coughs> this is important bearing. Wall bearing. Sweet bearing. Okay. Wall bearing is two wheels joined together with small spherical metallic parts. Probably you've seen some of those. And these will reduce the friction. Sleeve bearing, two cylinders inside each other. It's uh, made out of soft material. Sleeve bearing are very useful when it comes to very low weight rotor. If the rotor is very heavy, it's not a good idea to have a sleeve bearing. Is that yeah. uh, also a needle bearing? Huh? Needle bearing? Needle? It's, it's similar? It's yeah, yeah. Similar, similar to that. But is it a bushing? Does it have other spindles individually? Does it have the spindles individually? No, 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 no. That's a, that's a roller bearing. Yeah, okay. So bearing, uh, if anybody walk with trucks, trucks don't have ball bearing. Mm -hmm. The weight is too much, to, it will crush the ball. So it has sleeve bearings. That's why trucks have a lot of power to go overcome the ball bearing. You see bearings like that, like skateboard wheels. Sleeve yeah, sleeve yeah. Sleeve it has, has light weight. Have a weight you cannot do with ball bearing. Yeah. Say again? Ball bearing does not handle a lot of weight. You said sleeve bearing. Yeah, wait, I just said sleeve bearing. Oh, that's a mistake. <laughs> ball bearing does not handle a lot of weight. Sleeve bearing can handle a lot of weight because we have a lot of surface area. This is what it looks like. It's two cylinders inside of each other. Wait, so ball bearing can get out of weight? No, no, no. other way, other way around. Ball bearing, sleeve bearing is a bushing. Yeah. But uh, bushing is different. Uh, when I think of bushing, I think of ceiling. When I think of ceiling, I think of weight bearing. This is sleeve bearing. <clears throat> so 
So if you notice here, there's a lot of area to handle the weight. Oh, that's really sweet. Yeah, okay, that's and it's made out of uh, soft material, soft metals, and uh, not necessarily, no, also rotation, also rotation. And it's made out of uh, soft material, and usually it's lubricated, and you have water, I uh, mean, oil circulating through it to help with the lubrication. What happens is, with the, with the sleeve bearings is, once the motor starts running, the motor becomes kind of airborne in the middle, and a film between, an oil film between the sleeve and the shaft will, will form, and you, you're not supporting all the weight. You will mostly <coughs> support the weight only in the starter. That's why the starter is hard. Once you start uh, spinning, the weight will be distributed evenly, and it will be, it will be uh, no pressure on the sleeve. If you looked, uh, did you go to the power plant with Bill? Yeah. You go to power plants and big turbines, they, they, they leave them idle. They don't turn them off, because starting off, off is a very big deal. Uh, with some huge motors, they have sleeve bearings that uh, you turn on a pump, and the pump will pump oil through the sleeve, so it will lift up a little bit uh, the motor before you start up. The startup is the biggest issue with the sleeve bearings. And again, that's for big, big motors. They also have uh, the newest that's technology. That's Probably you know about that. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's why trucks, they leave them on. Yeah, yeah. They get out. Uh, yeah, <laughs> it's better to keep it on than to, yeah, to start up again. Okay. There's also, uh, for some motors, they have something called magnetic bearing, where you have a magnet around it that is energized and lift up the, the, the shaft so it will spin freely with no friction at all. But again, it's weight, there's a weight component to it and the amount of power you have to go through. So these are some kind of the bearings. We're not going to fix bearings. We just not need to recognize them and see what kind of bearings we have. And again, in sleep, it's just uh, two metals touching with some lubrication and sometimes the material is different. They have silicon or Teflon, which is very smooth. Okay, starting relays for single phase motors. So the starting relays, what they do is just drop off your startup winding. When we did the motor lap, we heard the click. When the motor clicked, that means you drop the startup winding. If you did not drop the startup winding, what will happen? It will just keep going faster and faster and faster until it will eat up, and eventually it will burn the motor. So, so split phase is different. It does not have uh, a winding because the phase is split into two two paths. Uh, you don't need to remember that, but at least you have information about how does it work. And it's accomplished by opening the type motor by centrifugal switch mounted on the motor, which we have in here. That's a tubular torque switch that does not have a start of winding. It just cut off the entire internal winding once you reach proper speed. Oh, I feel that. Yeah. You don't need to remember this. It's <coughs> high, high like degrees. When you say we know that stuff? Huh? We don't need to know this stuff. You don't need to remember that. that. I will write down the things on the board that you need to remember. All right. So these are the three tabs you need to remember here. <coughs> <coughs> a few things I want you to remember, and that's it. Don't get the information, but uh, there's a lot you have to remember. So this is enough. Current relay. Solid state. So, I don't also want you to remember back a little bit of it's too much, but I will explain what it means. So this is the voltage amount produced in the starting winding. So this is the back electromotor force, is the voltage required for the start winding to start turning the motor. What you need to remember here is we have relays that will cut off the start of winding. Current relay, solid state relay, and potential relay. Because when you go and do some service for some hermetic compressors, that's what you're gonna see in the outside. And you want to know what kind of relay is that and what is the replacement. But, yeah. So, relays 
driver now you use phase motor or three phase motors? Yes. Only, only yes. Phase motor? Because three phase motors, they do not need any styling apparatus. And this will have a winding inside that will start the motor and the relay will cut off the style of winding once we reach certain RPM. Yeah, the book says 75. So, starting amperage and running amperage. These are important. It's maximum speed. So that's maximum speed? That's 70, uh, once we reach 70 percent uh, more maximum speed, it will cut off the star water. Huh? Yeah. So you over design the water for the speed and you get 70 percent of that. Starting average and running average. Stay at that, that speed, the seventy percent, or no? It's like once it cuts out, like when it's for a job or drop off, or no, no, it stays. Stays at seventy. Yeah, seventy percent. Yeah. Maximum yeah. water speed. Seventy five. Seventy five. Put it seventy five. Leave it here. I've seen a seventy as well. And again, I always go with the manual, but seventy or seventy five. That's close enough. So, starting amperage, you notice when we did the motor, when we put the clip on, meter on it, and we just start it, the amperage goes up a little bit, and it stabilizes. So the start amperage is usually higher, why? It's we it's have, eight joules to start. Yes, because we have a lot of friction, we won't need more torque, so it's gonna pull some amperage, that's the starting amperage, and it should be labeled on the motor, but it's going to be a little bit higher. Once we reach our optimum speed, it should be, it should be stabilized, and that's the running average. And uh, usually they call it also lock rotor average. You'll see it on the, on the, on the motor lock. So I might ask you, what is lock rotor average? Yeah. Running average? Wait, so what are you gonna ask us? What, uh, what does it mean? What does it mean? It's like the average that the motor will drop as it starts. Full load average? What is full load average? Again, in the lab, did we notice that the, the motor has a full load amperage. It's like what is the amperage supposed to be drawing when it's running. And when we run the motor by itself, it was less than the label. Why? No, because we did not have anything attached to it. Running the motor by itself. So the motor, is that what you said? No, uh, it's, it's no, no. It's more like a fire. No load. Yeah, no load. Whether it being a fan, whether it being a weight, whether it be a motor. So it's designed to run something at this full load amperage. So when you run by itself with nothing on the shaft, it's going to be a little bit lower. When you put your inducer fan motor, when you put your pump, it's going to be a little bit higher. And you put, if you hook up everything, it should be around that full load average. It should not be higher. OK? 
Okay, it could be a little bit lower, but it could not be higher. If it's higher, what will happen? Burn out. Burn out. Burn out. Over time, it will, it will overheat and you will reduce its life. If the warranty on is 10 years, it's for full load. Any questions about this? These motors are very, very important because again, a lot of components we have are motors. Just knowing how to diagnose a motor is very important. And uh, you know, have to work with them a little bit more. So what if you went to a job and the FLA is running at the right amperage? How would you fix that? Uh, check the capacitor, it has a running capacitor. Check the wiring. If it's lower or higher. Uh, okay, let's, 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 let's take a case. Let's go and check everything. Yeah, that's a good question. You go there, you, you put in your clip on, and the amplitude is higher. Something is wrong. Is it a bearing that's bad? Some obstruction? Try to go and clear it up. If it's still higher, then change the motor. Something is wrong with the motor. If it's too low by a little bit, that's okay. If it's too low by a lot, that's not okay. Probably is not giving you the right idea. What's a little bit? 10%? Yeah. 10 that's what you say, David. Yeah. Did you say those were again? Huh? FLA and LRA. Uh, that's a locked rotor amperage. Yeah. And that's when the motor is just starting up in the beginning. Right. It will spike up. Yeah. And that's a running amperage once it's already spooled. Okay. Like, uh, do, do, don't you notice that when you just turn on the AC, all the lights in the house dim? Yeah. So that's the amperage being drawn from the entire house. Yeah. Then it stabilizes again. And every time, and the first time it's higher than the second time. Even if it cut off because of the thermostat and it comes back again, it's not as, as bad. But the first peak is very high. That isn't supposed to be yellow, right? No, it is. Oh, it is? Yeah. Especially if it's the same circuit. Oh, okay. If it's in the, if the IC is in the same circuit with everything else, it will throw more amperage. Especially if it's an old house and old water. Yeah. Current and magnetic relays. These are two relays, again, they cut up at 75% uh, of the speed, and they are the, the three types we have here. It's enough to know that there's a current relay and a magnetic relay. Magnetic and, uh, is the same as uh, current, and how does it work? That is my relay, that is a switch. Armature. It's a very simplistic way to put it. Once you run the current through here, when the current is high enough, become more magnetized. We'll pull this in, and that which will cut off the circuit. That's what you need to know. Belt mounted like a solenoid. That's the solenoid over here. Copper wire on us here. The hollow core. Steel plunger. That's the armature over here. This is your armature. Switch tags are normally open. We will take the covers from by the other kind of time you remove. As speed increases, amperage decreases. Yeah. I would got confused about the solenoid, but you said it's a very easy. Okay. Uh, solenoid is a coil like this. And we know that we, when we run current through a wire, it has small magnetic field around it, correct? Yeah. If we put an iron core in the middle, it becomes a stronger magnet. So that's the solenoid. So we, it gets the magnet. So what does it do? Okay, it moves things. So solenoid can move this up and down. Once you energize this, it will be a magnet, and this will pull up and when you de-energize it, it'll drop down. That's so on. But what about like the solenoid in that picture was like forcing that to move? Yeah. Like so, no, I'm saying like like what's moving in that? Uh, this little, no, 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 the other diagram. This, this one? Right? Yeah. This, this magnet here has still it's, it's still on the core. This armature is moving. Oh, right. It will attract and repel. That's the idea of a solenoid. This is a how it looks in a relay. So when you think of solenoid, think of a coil and a magnet. You energize it, it pulls something up, you energize it, it's, it goes. And you also see the door open sometimes. Just those, uh, those little doors. Like like yeah. Clipper. Clipper off solenoid. And also uh, those uh, keypads. And click, it pulls the 
uh, uh, the lock gate. So, <laughs> and uh, also, zone valves have small solenoids. We just like it pulls in, it pulls out. Your car has a lot of solenoids in it. Yeah. Oil solenoids. Uh, if you put your switch on, like not fully, you'll hear, you'll hear a click. That's a solenoid for the gas pump. Oh. It turns out. And like, the oil comes in. And they're very important, they're very reliable. Just open and close by pulling or dropping a pin. <coughs> We can talk a week about some of It's really, there are people who are specialists in these kind of valves because they're very important and do a lot of control. And this, this technology enabled us to do a lot of control. If it wasn't for solenoids, there would be no control. Like uh, now with a solenoid, you can turn on a motor, you can turn on a valve, you can turn on things from far away. So that's uh, the, the, the beauty of solenoids. There's another one that's called uh, motorized valves, which is a motor top of the valve and you can open it and close it and also a control the flow up and down. Troubleshooting. Uh, basically easy, we test the car, we test the, the coil. If this coil has zero, that means it's burnt. So you go with a continuity or resistance, you put your lead in here, if there's nothing going through it, it's burnt. Uh, it's not working. Uh, the contact has uh, are usually normally open. Uh, we're not going to check that, but by this method, just check the check the resistance, and each each relay has its own way to test it. Uh, some of them are sealed; you can't even open them. It's just a big, small block box outside the hermetic compressor. You just want to know if it's. Uh, Running or not, you just go with the resistance and check the resistance between the leads. If you have zero, something is wrong with the relay. And those are mechanical. Sometimes they get uh, way at the time. The metal gets fatigued and it breaks. This is what it looks like. It's the curved relay. And you see the coil here. These are my leads. And the coil will push in or close a pin in here. And this is how it's plugged in. And you see the coil inside. There's a pin inside to push things in and out. This is a relay, and probably you'll see them outside the magnetic compressors. Um, is there a bearing inside? Uh, there's no bearing in the relay, just a pin which is in and out and make a contact or not. This was the inside. See the guy pin, this is the pin, and this is the, the coil. Similar to here, this is your coil, this is your pin, once it energizes goes up, it goes down based on the, on the polarity in here. And there's a spring to keep it in place. Uh, again, it's not something we'll fix. Just knowing how it functions will able you to test it a little bit and know if it's running or not. Any questions? Don't go too deep into details. At least you know this is a current relay and it's outside the compressor and it controls the line. Uh, how do you know if that? Uh, Again. How do you know if the current relay is bad? Is this the coil? The coil. Yeah. Go with the continuity and make sure it's continuous. If you get zero, the coil is bad. And uh, if, you, if you hear some rattling inside, some of the metallic parts are broken. And some of these things are really cheap. They are really cheaply. The metal, the metal inside and the plastic component just deteriorate with time. So you want to make sure that they are running uh, OK. And this is basically the schematic. Yeah. Contact, this is the relay, you energize it, it pushes up, pushes down. Same thing translated into lines and swivel. But this is your pin, you energize the line, it will go up. There's an actual, an actual spring action? Yeah. No, the, the spring is to keep it in place and give it some tension. But yeah, the, the magnet will just pull it up. Yeah. All right, I'll stop here and finish the rest on Monday.